What is going on, investors? Back again. I promised you a few weeks ago when we did Berkshire Hathaway's financial report. This is Warren Buffett's company. They report earnings just like every other company does on a quarterly basis. But what they also do because they own a bunch of individual stocks is they're required to file this form 13F every, I think it's every quarter as well. And so this doesn't often come out when earnings comes out. So we got this form today and we are going to walk through every stock inside of Warren Buffett's portfolio. But before we do that, let's just take a look at the headlines. I think the big headline is Warren Buffett bought some gold, Barrick Gold. If you're not familiar with uh, Warren Buffett, it has traditionally said he doesn't like gold. It's not a performing asset, all this. Well, guess what he did in the last quarter? He bought 20 million shares or 21 million shares of Barrick Gold, ticker symbol gold. And so we'll jump into the charts here in a minute and take a look at that one, see what he might have saw there. Some of the other headlines here is, as we know, he eliminated his stake entirely in all the airlines. He actually did this uh, as the financial uh, crisis and as the health crisis was materializing back in March. And I think this was a good move. I think some people criticized him. But if you look at the stock chart of these airlines, they've pretty much been, uh, you know, they've been up and down, but they've pretty much been in a channel since the health crisis started to materialize here in the United States back in March. And there's obviously been other places to put your money that have been more beneficial than the airlines. The other headlines is he reduced his stake in Wells Fargo. He exited completely out of Goldman Sachs. As we know, if you watched my last video on Berkshire Hathaway, he unloaded a clip into Bank of America. I mean, this dude went all in on Bank of America. He bought a bunch of shares of Bank of America. So it could be that he has so much exposure to Bank of America, he needed to trim some stake in Goldman Sachs, needed to get out of Wells Fargo. That's potentially, maybe he's doing some portfolio shuffling as well. He trimmed his stake in JP Morgan as well. But I think the headline you all want to take is he added Bear Gold. It's a brand new position. Now let's jump into the stocks that he owns. And before I go through this. If you we go through this entire list and there's not a single stock on here or ETF that you own, I think you need to check your life decisions and certainly your portfolio decisions. You, not that you need to copy Warren Buffett, everything he does and copy his every move, but this is one of the world's greatest inventors. It's it's almost like not taking Michael Jordan's advice for how to shoot a basketball or Tiger Woods advice how to swing a golf club. If you're doing it completely different than those gentlemen, then chances are you're probably doing something wrong. And so if you don't have at least a small portion of any of these stocks in your portfolio, you are doing it wrong and chances are you probably have you're way overexposed to risk assets. Now, amazon.com, I'd love for amazon.com. This is time this is here's the column this column is value and so you have this and then you need to add uh, it's in thousands. So this is 1.1 billion dollars plus another 300 million or so. And so you have about a $1.5 billion stake in Amazon. I'd love for that to be a minor position for me. And that's where Warren Buffett is with Amazon. I obviously am very high on Amazon if you follow this channel. And it's good to see Warren Buffett's on that train as well. American Express is one of his top four holdings along with Apple. We see here he owns tons of these stocks. Look how big these numbers start to get when you take a look at these positions in these companies. Just absolutely gigantic stakes in these companies. Bank Bank of America, he owns, I think, over 11% of Bank of America now. He has huge, gigantic portions of Bank of America. He's got Bank of New York Mellon Corporation. Here's that Barrick Gold. Okay, it's still relatively minor in terms of dollar value, but I think the significance that Warren Buffett has finally cracked his unwillingness to buy gold. He's now, now he's not buying, he's kind of buying, I guess you could say almost like a derivative of gold. He's buying a gold miner, but it's their performance. Performance is almost identically tied to the performance of the metal itself. We got Biogen here. We got Charter Communication. Coca-Cola is also one of his top four holdings, along with American Express, 
Apple and Bank of America. We've got Costco in here. We've got this Davita Healthcare. We've got General Motors in here. That's a stock that I own. It hasn't been performing too well. We got Globe Life Incorporated. We've got JP Morgan. We still have a pretty significant portion of JP Morgan in here. Got Johnson and Johnson, relatively small stake in here. Kraft Heinz is a big stake. He's got this big stake in Kraft Heinz, still owns that. That stock actually has been doing pretty well. Kroger, we've got Liberty Media Corporation. We got M. MNT Bank. He's got a ton of exposure to financial, not necessarily something you have to copy, but Warren Buffett really loves the financial sector. He's got tons of bank exposure. We've got MasterCard in here. We've got Mondelez. He also likes that like consumer packaged good stuff like Kraft Heinz, Mondelez, Coca-Cola type companies as well. He's got Moody's in here. He's got PNC Financial, another financial. He's got Procter & Gamble, got RH, whatever that is. Not exactly sure what that is. We've got a, an ETF here. Take a look, even Warren Buffett's got some ETFs. He's got this Spider S&P 500 ETF. Sirius XM. This is interesting. Out of all these stocks, this is probably, I would guess, considered maybe one of the more speculative ones, at least one of the cheaper stocks from a, from a price standpoint. Sirius XM Holdings is one. I, I You know, it's a, it's a relatively speculative stock. It's a small port, a portfolio position for him. I've got Sirius in my car. I love it. But the stock itself is, is relatively speculative. Store cap. He's got Suncor Energy got Synchrony Financial, more exposure to the financials here, got Teva Financial pharmaceuticals, got U.S. Bank Corp here, got UPS, that's United Parcel Service here, got another index fund, this Vanguard one. We've got VeriSign, that that stock has been on a tear recently. Visa as well, and then here's our stake in Wells Fargo. While he trimmed this stake, you can see there's some big numbers here. He's got a huge stake still in Wells Fargo. Got this company here, I'm not some kind of coding company, that's interesting, might be one I look into. Got Liberty Global as well. Got Got Stone Coal and then finally Liberty Latin America Limited down here. Relatively minor stake. So let's jump over to the chart. He bought ticker symbol gold, which is Barrett Gold, the gold miner. I actually think this is an interesting stock chart. I think we're approaching this level here of support around $25.50. The stock right now is at $29. bucks. we are actually up here because what happened was is once Warren Buffett announced his stake, here's where we closed today, right around this $27 mark, and boom, we filled this gap. That's what happens with these stocks is I often talk about on the channel when you see these gaps here, the odds of the price chart filling these gaps is relatively high and that's exactly what we did. I think this would this was approaching to be a nice setup. I think Warren Buffett kind of ruined it. I think we were going to come down here, potentially bounce off the 25.50 mark somewhere down in here and then boom, this stock was going to fill this gap. Well, it just did it overnight basically when Warren Buffett announced his a stake in the company. From a perspective of gold, now Barrett Gold is a miner. GLD is like a derivative of gold. Again, the same thing happened with gold just in the reverse. We had a gap here. So gold has been on at a monster tear and we had a big gap here. The stock gapped up, kept trading up. What happened? That gap is always a magnet for price in my opinion. So what we saw is boom, the stock gap down. Notice that these bars fill this gap in almost perfectly. And so what I now see is a gap above this. I actually see gold at some point trading back up into this gap. I think we come back up into these highs at some point. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow. It might be next week. It might be two months from now. It might be a year from now. But I think this is going to be a magnet for price for gold. I think what we saw with gold is a lot of investors. This is one of the best performing assets cost of the year along with silver as well. I think what happened was a lot of investors got caught with their pants down, so to speak. They didn't have any exposure to gold. All of a sudden, gold started ripping to the upside. And then you saw people say, oh, I, have, I don't have any exposure to gold, so I'm going to get some exposure. Then we see this kind of euphoria motion. You see like bigger volume, like kind of the novice and maybe the people that are late to the party essentially come in, they party super hard. And then what happens? The stock breaks down and it gaps down. So I think there's going to be some opportunity to buy gold. I think you're going to have governments under pressure to spend and print a bunch of money. That is bullish for the metal. Now, normally I would 
typically just buy the physical gold. That's a little difficult in today's circumstances. There's some shortages. There's quite a premium, especially on kind of the collector coin side. I think if you don't have any exposure there, you want to work on that over the next year or two to have some exposure to the physical metal itself. Find a safe place to store it. Get a safety deposit box if you want to do go that route as well. So gold is something I think you should have some exposure to. And guess who agrees with us now is Warren Buffett himself, although he bought kind of a derivative of gold, which is the miner, which actually, in my opinion, the chart looked a lot better until then. Boom, we gapped up here. I think now we're up in this channel up here. If you want to come in here and buy this stock, maybe wait till it pulls back to 2859 or something. These highs back in here will should provide some support. This gap fill now might provide some support as well. So Warren Buffett bought some gold. That's the headline. After hours, his stock is up fractionally, we see here. It'll be interesting to see how the market and investors digest that Warren Buffett has jumped on the gold train. We'll see how far he takes it. So there we go. Just wanted to jump in here and talk about this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Have a great weekend. We'll be back again soon. Good luck with your investments.